Hi, I'm Mark Goodfellow. I'm the lead elder of Church on the Way. I want to introduce us as a church to you, who we are. I want to tell you that we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we want to make him known throughout the earth. We want to work with God the Holy Spirit as he leads us and guides us in endeavoring to do this. We want to just tell you that we're a family that works together, we're united as one. We're on a journey to fulfill the purposes of God in our life. And we encourage you as we have this pioneering heart to, to go to the nations and to preach this gospel, not only in our, our nation of South Africa, but the nations of the earth, to reach out with the good news that we find in Jesus Christ. So in this process, we really do believe that we are a church on the go. We are on this journey, this adventure together. We don't have all the answers, but we do know who has the answer, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So come and join us as we work together and we work on this journey to fulfill his plans and purposes for our lives. God bless you. Father, we just thank you that as we come under your word today, that you would open up the dimension of understanding for every one of us. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you've placed this on my heart just to bring life and light to every one of us. But Lord, I don't only ask that it will become head knowledge, but out of this, Lord, that there be something of a wonder of doing and working together with you. We, we understand that we need to partner with you, and may we work out that partnership with you, Holy Spirit. And as you give us insight this morning, will you bless us and will you, will you bring light again to every one of us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll continue with a series that we continue it's partnering with the Holy Spirit concerning spiritual gifts. And this is part three of the, thing, of the process. I just really want to encourage us, as I encouraged us last week, is that the Holy Spirit wants to work with you. And wants to partner with you. I think it's just not just a working together. It's not just a working relationship. It's an intimate personal relationship and a partnership. And where he's the senior partner and, and we're the junior partner. And he has everything and we have nothing. Isn't that wonderful? He's got everything. And uh, he wants to supply what is in Christ to us. And he wants to work with us because there's an advancement of the kingdom. God wants to advance the kingdom. Sorry, is the sound okay? He wants to advance the kingdom in and through us and God's restricted us the the message of the gospel to go through you and I and uh, I want to just say it's an incredible incredible privilege to be able to walk with the Holy Spirit and uh, we've got to nurture that we've got to believe that and as we we work it out and I really I want to bring this encouragement there's a dimension of walking with the Holy Spirit I really believe Jesus wants us to walk with. That's why I said, wait till you receive power on high, that the Spirit of God will come to live inside of us as Christ lives in us. We've got to learn to walk with God, the Holy Spirit. And it's not just for an expression of understanding what the Scriptures say. It's got to be day-to-day -day life. And these things that we're bringing to you are not something that are going to be the, the gifts that be on the mantelpiece, but are there to be worked out. And I'll just say the knowledge that we get through today and, and what we've been getting, I really want to trust that there'll be an application you know, I had an opportunity to study, to study accounting, and, but when we study accounting, they, they very cleverly put you under articles, and you've got to do three years of articles in an accounting firm, and you've got all this head knowledge, and you land up in the workplace, and you realize you know nothing. <laughs> You might have all this head knowledge and understanding of the thing. And I remember one of the basic things in accounting is the thing called in the accrual. And uh, I had to go to the partner and say, what is an accrual? And we learned that in first year, you know, because I'd forgotten all those things. We got into this depths of consolidation and all those funny deferred tax and all that stuff, but forgotten what the basics were. And I want to just say, God wants us practically to outwork these things. So this is not just for head knowledge. It's for us to actually take hold of these things and work together with the Holy Spirit and let's see them operating in our lives. And they, they're here for every one of us. Um, God hasn't just limited to those who seemingly are spiritual. That's a lie from the devil. We're all spiritual. And God wants us to walk in His gifts by the Holy Spirit. So our, our text again I read from 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 14, and I read from the New King James Version. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant 
You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but the same God works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That's the outworking of the gifts. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so is Christ. For one, by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. So that is the understanding, and we've been going through the nine gifts of the Spirit in this portion of Scripture. But I want to just say is that the, this portion of Scripture is not the totality of the gifts. Um, they are listed in the Scriptures. I haven't put them in together, but there's 75 gifts, 25 gifts that have been listed in the Scriptures. And there's probably a lot more that are not listed in the things that I mentioned last week. Some of the gifts that are not listed is worship leading, hospitality, uh, the ministry to children. These things are, are still gifts to the Lord. But I want to just encourage us today that... Um, these gifts as you, as you, that you receive are work through faith. God has given us faith uh, when we are born again. Faith, we, have, we have a good deposit, um, a measure of faith in our heart that God gives by the Holy Spirit. And that faith needs to operate. It's not the gift of faith that operates the gifts. It's our, our faith. And I want to just encourage us. It's impossible to please God without faith. And I, I want to just say the outworking of the life that we have in Christ takes faith. And we've got to be exercising faith. And I even before we look at the gifts, are you living by faith? You know, there's a scripture that says that when the Lord returns, will he find faith on the earth? And I want to just say that we've got to live by faith. You are facing challenges. There are things that you are going through at this point in time. You're asking God to undertake. But we've got to be in faith. If we're not in faith, where are we? We are in unbelief. We are in doubt. And we cannot be in those positions. God doesn't want us to be walking in doubt and unbelief. It's, for him, it's a no-no to walk in unbelief. One of the things where the disciples were castigated and rebuked by the Lord was when they operated in unbelief. And I believe even today the Lord, <clears throat> in his grace and his love, wants us to operate in faith. And when it comes to the outworking of, of these gifts, there's something that you've got to exercise your faith. You have faith. You've got to believe it, you've got to speak it, and then act on it. It's the same thing you know, when these gifts only operate. Yes, we are led by the Spirit of God, but it's not going to happen if faith is not exercised. And I want to encourage you, every one of you has given, been given faith in, in Christ Jesus, and He wants you to exercise that faith. So the categories of these gifts in the, this 1 Corinthians 12, there are nine gifts here. There are three categories here, the gifts of revelation, revelation, and we spoke about that last week, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and we're going to be talking about um, discerning of spirits today. And then also the, the next category is the power gifts. It's the gift of faith, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, and then the third one, inspirational vocal gifts, the gift of prophecy, different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So I just want to get into more detail about the gift of discerning spirits. What is this? The discerning of spirit gives insight into the spirit world. God reveals <clears throat> in, in the spirit. He, he's limited this gift to work in, in, in respect of spirits. Um, it's not just discerning of, of devils. As some people think that discerning of spirits is just to d discern what the devil is, but it's also to work out what are the spirits? Are they good and bad spirits? And God will want to reveal to us there's an opening up the dimension of the spiritual realm. I really believe that God wants to open to us. So firstly, um, we've never, all, never seen God, and this discerning of spirit is also to discern who God is. And we, we see in, in Exodus 33 where M Moses asked God to reveal his glory. And he said, I'll hide you, and I'll pass 
past you. So he never saw the face of God, but he saw the back of God, and he saw the goodness and the glory of God. That is a discerning to see the likeness of God. In Isaiah 6 verse 1, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Here too, um, Isaiah never saw God face to face, but he saw this, the likeness of God. I really believe, this is my perception, no one has really seen God. They've seen a vision of him, but they've never seen him in the physical. And um, I really believe one day when we get to heaven and things are all changed and there's a, a new order, I believe God will open up his physical presence to us. But we effectively, I don't believe anyone is actually seeing God physically. We're always seeing him in spirit. We've seen a vision of him. Even with, with Jesus, the discerning of the risen Christ, I don't believe anyone has seen after he's been on earth, has seen him whilst he's been ascended. We've seen him in the spirit. And this is what the discerning of the spirit. Many people have um, seen Christ, but they've seen him in the spirit. They've never seen him physically again. Even when he appeared after he ascended, he was in the spirit. Because how does someone go through a door and disappear? Um, you've got to be in spirit physically. But Jesus has a physical body. He has been raised from the dead and he's, and he's at the right hand of the Father in a physical body, but he's here in us by, his, by the Spirit. And, but God wants to open up. And I really do believe there's a, we, we've seen even this morning through the outworking of these visions that have been taking place, there's been a discerning of spirits. You've been seeing God has revealed things in the Spirit and it's, it's open to all of us. We need to discern also the, the Holy Spirit. And we see John on the Isle of Patmos. He was in the Spirit, the Bible says in Revelations, and the Lord revealed to him the seven spirits of, of the Holy Spirit, and God wants to reveal these things to us by the, the things of the Spirit. So what are, what are in the Spirit world that God wants to reveal at His time? We can never open up and we can, we can never demand these things, but the Spirit wills as He reveals these things. So the divine spirits, what are they? There's the, the angels, the cherubims, the seraphims, the archangels, the host of angels that are in, in heaven. We see Jesus much in his ministry talks about the angels. When he was in the, being tempted by the devil, the angels came and ministered to him. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, the angels came and strengthened him. There was an there was a outworking of the spiritual realm. There's also the evil spirits of, of knowing what is Satan and his legions. And uh, I, I want to just say we shouldn't <clears throat> be seeking after the evil one to see who he is, but there are times when God will reveal where there's an evil spirit that is actually operating in, in a person's life. It happened in, in Acts chapter 16, verse 16, where Paul cast out that spirit of divination of that girl that was fortune-telling, and he, he perceived what it was, and God revealed to him, and he cast that spirit, and there was a lot of um, trouble at that time because he cast out that devil that were making money through this girl. And they also the a discerning of the human spirit where there, there's good and evil spirits. So this is not to judge, but it's a perception where you can pick up where people are, are of a good spirit or of a bad spirit. You, you, you can just pick it up. Sometimes you come into the presence of people and you know there's, it's not right. There's something really going on in this time. That can be the outworking of the, the discerning of spirits. So discerning of spirits reveals the source of supernatural uh, manifestation. The gift also reveals the kind of spirit behind the super, supernatural manifestation, whether good or evil. But yet, as the sons of God, we are led by the Spirit of God, and we have an inner witness too. So we might not always have this gift operating, but we can discern through the inner witness and through the Word of God, we can, we can, we can determine which, which is good and bad. So the Word of God is also always paramount to be determining what we are seeing and can picking up. You know, we, we see by the fruits of the Spirit, of what people are producing we can it's not a discerning but it's an observing we can pick up the fruit of what's actually happening the next point discerning of, of spirits is is not discernment what i'm saying here no one has the gift of discernment because that that belongs to those who want to judge <laughs> we have the gift of discerning of spirits and we've got to be very careful is that we don't get into a place where we get judging of people because eventually we get with this discernment and we look for faults and we get into a place of fault finding and um, the lord doesn't want us to get into that place we it's to be discerning of spirits what, what, is, the, what is their source what are the, what are they doing we are never to be looking for people's faults 
We're never looking at people to bad, bad character on that. And effectively, the scripture says that we are forbidden to be doing those things. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, judge not that you will not be judged. And this is a big problem in the church. It's a big problem in the world that we all live with a judgmental heart. I'm to blame, you to blame. It's one of the easiest things to do to criticize. It's the easiest thing to find fault. It's very difficult to find the good. And we all fall into this trap. And I want to just say the Lord wants to correct us of that, that we don't look for faults that are discerning. We think we've got a spiritual gift. We're not. We're actually operating in the flesh. And we're actually doing what's something that God has forbidden us to do. So I really want to encourage us is that we rather need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, where this, where the Holy Spirit comes and He changes our understanding. And we'd rather become in Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. So that is an outworking that I really believe that God wants to do by the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants to bring us into a place that we don't get into fault finding. It's error. It's not the gift of discerning of spirits. It's an outworking of judgment. And God doesn't want us to be in that. So very important. And I, I wanted to say is this, this gift of discerning of spirits is vital. And I think where we, we are at this point in time in the world where the Bible tells us very clearly that the church is under pressure and that doctrines or demons are coming in and where false prophets are coming in and the apostate church that is falling away. How are people falling away? They're falling away through wrong teaching, through wrong people saying things, and we have to be trusting God to discern the spirits that are behind these things. And, you know, the, the Bible says, says no to ungodliness. So this is the fact of the thing is that we, we, we don't use this as judgment. I'm telling you, but this, this outworking of this gift of the Holy Spirit is very, very helpful. Because you can discern, and not to bring judgment, but you can set people free. You know, there's people in your life where they be going down the wrong track. And this takes boldness, and this takes be led, be led by the Holy Spirit. But where you can be use this gift, not just for yourself, but for others, you know, it takes incredible courage to go to a family member or a work colleague or someone even in the life of this church where this outworking of discerning of spirits is actually working. You, know, you go to them in love and you go to them and say, I really believe this is what the Lord's saying to you. You are following the wrong spirit. And it's happening in the church, unfortunately. It's happening in the church. And I want to encourage you, this is not only for you, but this is for those out there. And even people in the world that are unbelievers need you to be there to go and help them and to take them. You know, it's not hard to discern whether the, the outworking of people are falling after the world and falling after greed in that. But when God specifically tells something to you about someone, you know, the discerning of fear is a key aspect. Many people are, are run by fear. And if you can come and you can be used by God to say, your problem is fear. And I want to just tell you that God has set you free and wants to set you free from that fear. The, the scripture says that he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. You can liberate that person and bring them to a place of freedom. So these, this outworking of these gifts is not only just for you, but it's for others. And I'm telling you, it can be such a blessing in the thing. Again, I say this is not to judge. This is not to judge. We get into a judgment, God will not use you because that is not his heart. It's to love and to set the captives free, as the Lord said in Isaiah 61. So I'm, I really encourage you to pray and ask God to, to use you in that area. So it's not fortune telling. Be careful because the church is getting to a place where they want to be fortune telling. They use, they call it prophecy, and we'll get into that in the next, another session. We don't want to be in that position, but we want that because we want freedom. One freedom over people. You know, it might be even people with the bondage of the past and the stuff that's holding them. And yes, it can work through a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, but the discerning of spirits can actually bring people to a place of freedom. And I want to encourage you to trust the Holy Spirit to work through you. So the ne next gift is the gift of faith. It's a power gift. It's supernatural. It's not natural. Um, I really believe is that the gift of faith is one of the greatest gifts or the power gifts. 
in, in the amplified version of 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9 to another the wonder working faith or special by the same spirit so it's something that's given by the Holy Spirit to to bring power to an outworking of what God's wanting to do and I really believe there is an outworking of that that we at times need to need to see this the special faith that God gives to do the extraordinary in and through us and uh, I want to just say that we need to be seeing more and more of this so firstly as a word of explanation saving faith to be born again in Ephesians 2 verse 8 is for by grace you've been saved through faith and this is not of your own doing it is a gift of God I really believe as we hear the word of God this the saving faith is given by God to us that we can accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior Romans 10 verse 17 says the saving faith the faith that comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God and you've all exercised that if you've believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ God has given you that saving faith this is not the gift of faith this is saving faith that you could be saved then the fruit of faith Galatians 5 22 23 to 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and gentleness self-control against such things there is no law so it doesn't say faith um, but the Greek word behind that is still pistis, which is faith. And um, it takes faith to be faithful or full of faith. And uh, again, as I said earlier, when the Lord returns, will he find faith on the earth? And there's got to be an expression of that faith. So there's a fruit of being born again that you will operate in faith. And, um, and I want to just encourage you again, grow in, this, in this, this outworking of Jesus even said that you can grow in your faith. You can be strengthened. You, you, you can't just be weak in your faith. Your faith needs to grow in that. So fruit is for character, but the, this gift is for the power of God to be expressed through, through, through us. So faithing, saving faith comes before salvation. Faith or faithfulness, the fruit of the Spirit, comes after salvation. But the gift of faith, the manifestation, comes after the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus said to his disciples, wait till you receive power on high, because God expects his church to operate in his power. And it's a weakness. The church doesn't operate in his power. They have fallen back into, into systems, into man-made things, and we've got to be so careful that we don't, we don't go back into what we, what we know. We, we've got to take hold of what the Holy Spirit has for us, and this gift, the gift of faith, this manifestation of his power, is really there for us. So there was saving faith, the fruit of faith, then general faith. This is to, to, uh, general faith is to exercise to get answers to prayer, as I said earlier. Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So we, we need to grow in our faith. As I said earlier, we've got to feed on God's word, and as we hear the word of God, our faith gets stronger, and, and we have an inc increasing faith. And I want to just say that um, there's been some great things that have been done through, through faith. I'm sure even in your own life, the, one of the examples that I remember is... Um, by the, the, the what was like a George Muller that started those orphanages in England in the late 1800s where he didn't have any organization that he trusted he just by faith asked God and the Lord came and provided for it and at that time I think that almost 3,000 orphans in in those homes and no government intervention no social security that was paid out for them God provided in an incredible way and I want to just say is that God will always honor your faith. And I'm just saying, some of you might be finding difficulty financially. Um, don't just look at what's in your bank account. Um, don't, don't look at your own means, but trust God and have faith in Him, and God will come for you. There's Norman with such a testimony. I remember when Pat passed away, we thought, he said, well, how am I going to do this? How many years ago was that now, Norms? How many years ago was Pat passed now? seven years ago and God has been faithful and yes it hasn't always been easy but God has always been gracious and I want to just say God honors your faith and uh, I, I really want to ask you to continue to exercise your faith in the area of life just don't only just expect entitlement but exercise your faith you're, you're a child of God and God will provide for you the next point the gift of faith was supernatural blessing so God can also pour out his blessings upon us and we see that coming through the Old Testament where the patriarchs Aram, Isaac and, and Jacob would lay their hands on their sons and command a blessing 
And uh, there was even the fight about who would get the blessing. And uh, we see it didn't happen immediately, but it passed in over a number of years that blessing would come for them. I really believe that blessing is passed on. And you can pray a blessing. I remember the Lord rebuked me as a young Christian. I was driving down the road. I remember very clearly it was near Ells Park. And I was seeing people in the side, and I was saying, bless this one, bless this one, Lord, bless this one. And there was a, a gentleman that was quite mature in the Lord and came and said to me, Mark, be careful who you bless all the time. You've got to be wise with God's blessing. It's not just a matter that you bless everyone. And I thought, okay, but I really do believe is that God does want to bless us. This is not a bless me club. Um, God's blessing is favor. We go into Africa, and these people have no money. And they ask for a prayer of blessing and because they understand the value of it. It's not something that's makeshift and it's just something that you can just buy off the mantelpiece. It's, uh, it's something that's worth value, this blessing that comes from God. Then the gift of faith also for personal protection. And um, we see Daniel in the lion's den. And yeah, he was serving God and he was thrown into the lion's den. We can read in Daniel chapter 6. Um, from 16 to 17 and 19 to 23, where Daniel believed God, the special faith, and the mouths of lions were closed. Incredible. And then they threw the people that were guilty of it, they threw it into it, and the, the lions mauled them and, and killed them. So it was an outworking of special faith. And then also, Jesus um, ministers a man anointed by the Holy Spirit, exercising the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the examples is that Jesus, when he was sleeping on the boat, when the storm was raging, he had no concern. The disciples were around him and they were concerned is that they were going to drown. These were men that were skilled in fishing and the water. And yeah, Jesus is sleeping. That was a gift of faith, believing that he was protected by, by the Lord. And then the gift of faith was supernatural sustenance. We see in 1 Kings, Elijah didn't have enough food. And then the ravens came and they came and fed him. Then the gift of faith for raising the dead. Um, it takes supernatural faith to call the person's spirit back when, it's, when it has left the body. So that is a working of miracles to, to raise the person. And also the gift of, of healing because the person might not be healed when he raised from the dead that God's got to have healed in that. So there's, there's three gifts that are actually operating at the time. The faith to call that person's body to come back. Then the working of miracles, the power to raise the person. And then the gift of healing to restore them. So, But what we happen many a times, and we read from... Smith Wigglesworth also and some of the testimonies that we've seen before. It doesn't always come as a natural manifestation, but people step out in faith and believe, Lord, we're going to pray. And they get to the end of their faith, but then God intervenes. Supernatural gift of faith is exercised, and we start to see the outworking of, of these things taking place. It takes the gift of faith at times when there's, very, there's great difficulty to cast out devils. And we see that with the disciples, that they couldn't pass, um, cast out that demon and um, Jesus says this only comes out with much prayer. And I really believe there's sometimes there's a faith. There's, a, there's something of God just puts that supernatural faith. And there's a speaking and command the devils to leave from people's lives. Then the gift of faith for supplying the ministry of the Spirit. That's to, to release the Holy Spirit into people's lives. Galatians 3 verse 5. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? So the gift of, of, of the Holy Spirit comes through a lane of, of hands, but there's, there's also this ability to give the, the Holy Spirit to those that are prayed for. And I've seen that in my own life. There are times where people are battling to receive God, the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We lay hands upon them, and there's something of His faith. There's a release through me as I minister that these people come to the fullness of understanding of what he, God, the Holy Spirit, wants to do. So we see two outworkings of of these gifts there's a demonstration of god's power and there's a supernatural manifestation so god wants to do a demonstration we see that in, in in the scriptures that he wants to demonstrate his power but he also wants to manifest so how does this a demonstration faith is exercised and there's through the laying of hands but when the people receive the power of god that's the demonstration of this power but when the manifestation is when we exercise and we minister and god ministers these are manifestations so there's two aspects of this going forward so i'll get to the end of this and i really want to encourage you this this gift of faith in many areas of life god wants to use i, I remember this gift of faith we planted this church 
and um, we were being chased. We, were, we, we started in this building, and it was full that day. The next week, we landed up in this little room behind there where there's a storeroom now. There's a room called the Louis Clay Room, and there were 18 of us. And, um, and then God eventually grew it, and, and we, we moved out of here. We moved down to Champetre, which is now the, the market that's down there, and we came back here. And in that time, we, were, we, were, we, were, we didn't have a lot of money, but the Lord said to us, you need to buy land. And Dieter's not here today, but we, we found some land in Lakeside. And at that time, we put an offer in, and the church was in agreement, and we didn't have the money as a church. And then Nikki and I, we decided we had some extra money, and we put money aside as a loan to the church. But it took a year for the land process to come through, and by the time the land went through, the money could be paid back to us, and the land belonged to the church. And with no clear hearing from, from you know, I just knew we needed to build and we didn't have the money in the bank account. And then we started to build. And we built. And we built that property that we own as a church and been rented out at the moment. And we paid cash for the thing. It was fully paid for. And we were a small little church. And God provided anyway. And for me, I look back and then that was just a gift of faith. Whenever we needed money, the money was there. It was absolutely. Yes, people were giving. But there was just this outworking of faith that God actually brought for the provision for his church. So God can do the impossible. He can do the impossible. And when he wants to release it, that's what I'm saying. It's nothing we can determine. We can operate in the faith that he's given us. But this gift of faith. And, but I really do believe that God wants to raise the dead. He wants to cast out devils. He, he wants people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants to see his protection and his blessing upon people. He wants us to operate in these things. But do we desire? Do we desire? And I want to encourage you. Yes, we, we're getting further down. and We've got some more to go through. But this is, this is, again, I want to just say, as I said in the beginning, this is not something to be put on the mantelpiece. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to work in and through you. And I want to encourage you as you go and ponder on these things and even meditate on these things and ask the Lord, what do you have for me? This is not just another message. Because if we want to grow the church and we want to bring the church to maturity, these things need to be operating. You can't just call us a charismatic church. It's not about being charismatic. This is the church. And this is what the Spirit of God wants. And I'm asking you as the Spirit wills, to operate in that. Don't just sit there now, I'm coming for a message and this is nice. God wants to use you. Not just those that are seemingly leaders in the church. You. God wants to use you. And I want to say, will you be open to Him? And I want to, if you go in, you're going to be, you're going to be scared and you, because it's not natural. But as you step out and you just trust God, God will use you in dimensions that you've never, I believe the Spirit is going to be poured out in the season and he's going to be working through his gifts and God's going to be using you you're going to have a word of wisdom you're going to have a word of knowledge are you prepared to speak it are you prepared to say God wants to raise the dead are you prepared okay Lord I can't do it you can here I am and God you're going to do these things and God's going to raise the dead you're going to cast out demons people you hear what I'm saying today I know that the people think they're all scared about casting out I see it from the other side. The bondage that person is in that has been possessed by a devil and be held captive for so many years and to set that person free as much as we might be scared to do it, to liberate that person from that. They, they cannot go to a doctor. They cannot go to a mental institution to be set free. You and I can set them free as the Lord leads us and to do that. Why are we so scared? And I want to just say God wants to use you and he wants to use me to, to exercise these outworking of his gifts and to bring glory to him. Again, they're not to be put on the mantelpiece. And I want to encourage you, where do we practice? I'm not saying look for devils amongst us. <laughs> but where do we practice amongst ourselves? When we're in life groups, trust God for a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. To encourage one another. Trust. Trust for the discerning of, 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 of spirits. This is not to be super spiritual. This is, this is what the spirit wants. And yes, there's other aspects we're going to do. Practice. 
And I want to just say, if you say, Lord, here I am, use me. God is going to use you in, in dimensions. I remember as a young Christian, I, I, I was Bangbrook. You have to share the gospel, number one. I, I remember I, I've told you before, and I apologize if you've heard it before, but to tell someone that Jesus loved them, I said, Jesus, I remember I was walking back from varsity. There was an, an elderly African man with a hat. He was walking on the back road, not even in the main road, Jorison Street. And I walked past him. I said, this is my opportunity. And I said, Jesus loves you, and I'm gone. <laughs> But then the Lord said, but that's not good enough. <laughs> You've got to build a, re a friendship and a relationship. And I learned to engage um, with people and still, still learning to engage with people. But same with these things. The Spirit will stir. When you, when you get up in the morning, Lord, I want to be available to you. Here I am. Holy Spirit, I'm going into a day. That difficult boss, how can I minister to him or her? or that child, or wherever you find yourself. And Lord, just wait on the Lord. Sometimes people are in such a quandary. You know, I know many of you at times come to me and ask me, I don't have the answers. I've got to go to the Lord. Lord, and what does it have? And then we got to, I've got to trust for a gift of wisdom, or a word of wisdom, or a word of knowledge for you, or, and even to pray for you. At times when you call us to pray for you for sick, sometimes I have... I don't even want to pray. I want to run away because this thing is impossible. But I say, Lord, here I am. And we pray, and then God supernaturally comes through. I want to say you, are a, you can be a blessing to other people. Don't live according to the limitations of who you are, but allow the wonderful Holy Spirit that's within you to manifest, to demonstrate these things in and through you. This is the church's finest hour. Will you take up your mantle and begin to operate. Get into these articles like I had to go and do my articles and begin to do it. And I'm telling you, you will start with baby steps. But then take a step and then take a step. And it'll get easier and get easier. All of us, I'm including myself in these things. We, we, are, we are too afraid. We, we've settled. And uh, that's not a, a negative thing. But the world has taught us to settle. The devil doesn't want us to operate in these things because then we're dangerous. He doesn't want us to be dangerous. He wants us to be comfortable. He doesn't want us to be able to be stirring things and turning around. Imagine you walking down and you get to checkers and you're standing in the queue and you're behind someone and the Spirit of God says something to you and gives you a word of wisdom and you share that with that person and you get to pray with them and they are liberated. What a privilege. What a privilege. But we don't even think like that. Where's my bargain today? You know, or this is whew, this this food's getting so expensive. I'm included. We're not seeing the opportunity where God wants to use us in these things. So I hope you've been encouraged because I want to stir up the spirit within you. It is not to be dormant. This 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 Holy Spirit that's dwelling within us is not dormant, but we can make him dormant. And you've got to stir him up and you've got to believe for these things and walk in these things and uh, I'm trusting for more and more of that in your lives. Lift the lid. Lift the lid of your expectations in God and let him use you profoundly. Bernice, I believe you even got a word for your dad. I don't know what it is, but I really just sense as you see him next time, there's something God wants you to encourage him. Will you, will you just, okay, Lord, here I am, use me. And you will see what he will do in and through your life. Amen. But I want to pray for all of you that um, this will not just be head knowledge, but an outworking of God's grace. Father, we, we are your people. We love you. And Lord, you stirred us as we, we understand in this dimension of the Spirit. It's so foreign to us, Father. We don't know these things, and um, we don't always have someone to take us by the hand to teach us these things. But Holy Spirit, will you teach us? Will you use us as we make ourselves available to you? And for every one of us, Lord, not, don't help us not to get into error, but to get into the flow of the Spirit and to be a light and to be the salt of the earth, Lord, through the outworking. Lord, we see through your life on earth, these things operated without measure. 
and you were such a blessing. As much as there was opposition, you were such a blessing to those that you set free, that you healed, and you cast out demons. You even sat at the, at the woman at the well, and you told her about a past and a future. Lord, will you use us? The same spirit dwells within us, only if we be available. So help us to step out, to contend for this, and to work with you, Holy Spirit, now. So we ask you to bless us now in Jesus' name.